Hey, welcome back to Better Than Yourself. Today on Better Than Yourself, red wine vinegar. I'm gonna do red wine vinegar. I did apple cider vinegar. If you wanna hit the video, and check out the, the link to the apple cider vinegar making. Um, and But you'd look at it and realize it's really a long process. And my problem was, was that I didn't have any way to get any kind of a, um, apple, apple cider that didn't have preservatives in it. And every time I try to do something with a, a commercial product, I, I hit this barrier of, of, of preservatives. So you really, like, better done yourself, you gotta make your own. And um, so in the apple cider vinegar making, I did, I made the, took the apple cider that we got from the farm and fermented it into apple jack. And then I had the alcohol that I could add the acetobacters and let that ferment and make um, acetic acid vinegar out of the alcohol that was in the apple jack in the fermented cider. So I got thinking, well, I need to make some red wine vinegar, and that'd be awesome, because I can get red wine really cheap. You can, you know, pick up, this was uh, 12, 15 bucks, I think, at the, at the liquor store. And, um, but same trouble again. You look at it, and, and somewhere here on the label, it uh, contains sulfites. And sulfites are, you know, not something that the wine industry puts in your wine to give you a headache. That's, you know, that's another whole show. But um, it, it's a preservative. It's basically put into the wine, so naturally occurs, but the sulfites are put into the wine to prevent the alcohol from getting reacted with the acetobacters that are in here and there in the air. Um, and those acetobacters will get into untreated, unpreserved wine ferment the alcohol into acetic acid and make vinegar out of it. So I thought, well, it'd be great, man. I can just take, I can buy a jug of red wine. I can, I've got some um, leftover mothers and some apple cider vinegar and all kinds of um, bacterial goodness in here that I saved from the apple cider series. Um, I saved my, my, my mothers. And if, if you don't have a mother, if you want to do this project and you don't have a bunch of apple cider vinegars, mothers, or you know some other kind of a, a, a acetobacter culture. You can just actually go out and buy some some natural, um, you know, vinegar with the mother. You see apple cider vinegar with the mother, and certain brands of uh, of, of good unpasteurized, unpreservative laden vinegars will have with the mother. Look for it. You'll probably find it in your health food store. Um, I'll see if I can get you some links down below here to add some affiliate links to the list and you can pick up some some um, good vinegar. But I've got some uh, some aceto, my acetobacter collection here. So we'll be using that. But I'm getting ahead of myself. My trouble is I've got a whole gallon of red wine that I want to ferment and it's full of preservatives. So the trick, what you've all been waiting for, hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is where it's at. Hydrogen peroxide will actually react with the sulfur dioxide that's added to the wine and basically break it down, oxidize it. You know, hydrogen peroxide, it's a strong oxidizing agent. So, you know, it'll oxidize the bacteria that you might get into your wound and, and you know, it'll clean your wound out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna oxidize the wine, we're gonna oxidize specifically the, the sulfur dioxide and make a very weak solution of sulfuric acid. You can do the chemistry if you're into that kind of thing. I didn't do very well in that class. But what I can tell you is that a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in wine will break down the sulfites, remove them, or turn them into sulfuric acid, more honestly, and um, let you ferment it and make vinegar. So we can make our, uh, we can make our sour wine. We can, we can trump this whole effect of not being able to ferment our wine because we've gotten the preservatives out of it. So the gimmick is we're just gonna decant our fine wine here. If you work in a restaurant, you know you can swirl it. Get a vortex going. I'm gonna leave a little room. Whoa! All right, got some for later. And take this wine, we're gonna add just a literally like none. Get a fresh bottle. Don't don't use a bottle of this that's been sitting in your medicine cabinet for two years, twenty years. Run out to the supermarket and buy a fresh bottle of this. It this I think cost me about a buck and a half. And we're literally gonna use like for a gallon of wine, call it two capfuls. And then just whisk it in. You've probably seen there's um, SO2GO 
If you Google search SO2GO, there's a, a, I think it's an Australian company that makes a little atomizer, a little spritzer of hydrogen peroxide in a little spritzer you can carry with you in your pocket or in your purse and you can use it to take the the sulfites out of wine. Um, you can add it to a whole bottle, just rip it open and dump it in the bottle, or kind of like we did. Um, or you can go out and buy some hydrogen peroxide. It's literally the same thing. This is 3%, you know, medical grade hydrogen peroxide. Not necessarily food safe. I wouldn't drink this. It is, it's an oxidizing agent. It's not good for you. Do not take internally. Um, but with a good strong whisk like this, it's, we're going to use it up. We're going to, we're going to use up what we got here. Um, at this point, I think I just want to wait like about an hour and just let this do its thing because I don't want that hydrogen peroxide in there um, disinfecting my, my bacteria. So I'm just going to hang for a little bit here before I move on with this video. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, so it's been about an hour, and like I said, what I, what I really want to do is make sure that this reaction is complete. I want the hydrogen peroxide to bond with the sulfites and get the get the, the, the sulfites out of my wine so that I lose that preservative action, and then I want to make sure I don't have hydrogen peroxide that's going to kill my acetobacters, my, you know, my vinegar mother. So take your, your old mother, or if you're using, um, you know, a, a, a natural brand unpasteurized vinegar, and in it goes. And so we've got our, we've got our preservative free uh, red wine and we've got our acetobacters that are going to eat all that red wine alcohol and make it sour and sour it. We're going to make what the, what the French used to call sour wine, vin agra, sour wine. So this is going to be great. I wish I had, this is actually a, just a glass um, Edgar Hocken cookie jar. If you've got like, something else that's dark, I like to do it in glass. I don't like to ferment in metal or ferment in you know the old crocks or anything. If you if you watched my apple cider vinegar, I, I fermented it in my grandmother's old uh, crock. But probably not the best way to go, just because the crocks might have you know lead and things in the glazes. So I'm just going to use a, a glass um, fermenter this time. But I'm just going to try to cover it. So I'll you know I'll take this towel and I'll cover it. Probably put a piece of string around here to tie it shut. And I'll put this down in the basement for about probably four or five weeks. And then um, we'll come back to this video when we can stick the, a pH probe down into it and see how the fermentation process is eating that alcohol, creating acetic acid and making our red wine vinegar. So this will go down in the basement and see you guys in a couple of weeks. So it's been, oh gee, I gotta think, probably two months since I started this batch of vinegar. And in the meanwhile, I've actually learned a lot about vinegar. Um, th this vinegar is working. You can see that there's a beautiful mother that's formed in this thing that's probably, oh, I don't know, three eighths of an inch thick that um, is growing here. But in the, um, in, in the meanwhile, after we set up this vinegar, remember we, we oxygenated the vinegar to get the sodium bisulfite out, and then we added a mother and we added um, you know, some th and, and inoculated this um, red wine with acetobacters, which were in the mother, which were in that, that little bit of um, vinegar that we added, and then just let it sit. You know, we covered it up with a towel so it wouldn't evaporate too quickly to keep the flies out of it. But in the meanwhile, I found out why my vinegar wasn't working. When I was at the fermentation residency with Sandra Cass last month, I met up with Harry Rosenblum, the author of Vinegar Revival. And he was handing these books out um, to all of us, which was awesome, because this is a great book. If you have any interest in making vinegar, in cooking vinegar, or, or in cooking with vinegar, in you know, making drinks with vinegar, buy this book. It's about $20 on Amazon. I've got a link to it down below. Support Harry, he's an awesome guy and knows everything about vinegar. And I talked to him a little bit about it, and the problem with my vinegar wasn't so much the sodium bisulfite. Actually, the sodium bisulfite will just kind of release on its own, um, you know, if in an open air crock like this. So, you know, I like to use the, the hydrogen peroxide just to make sure to get it all out of there. It adds a little bit of oxygen to the, to the you know, wine, which helps the acetobacter. They like the oxygen. It's an aerobic fermentation. But in talking to Harry, he said that 
Acetobacters won't really be a real strong ferment unless the alcohol content is less than 9%. <laughs> Mind blown. So <laughs> I'm looking at my uh, wine bottle. I'm 12% by volume, 12% alcohol by volume. So the reason why I couldn't ferment this in vinegar was that it, there's the alcohol content's too high. So thinking about what you want to do, do the math to make this be less than 9% alcohol by volume, and it'll ferment. You know, as you can see. So I mean, the uh, I just washed my hands really well to handle my precious mother. But this is a beautiful mother. To tell if your vinegar is done, according to Harry, I mean, smell it, it smells like vinegar, taste it, you know, get taste, maybe even taste a little bit of vinegar, you know, just a half a spoonful out of, you know, out of your pantry, and then taste what you've got and, and see, you know, you, you've really got that, that acid flavor. You can be a little bit more scientific about it. You can get, you know, maybe some pH paper. Here we can have some fun. Let's do a little bit of this here and uh, keep it out of the fumes. But, the pH of three. So, yeah, this is definitely acidic. Um, you can also pick up uh, an electronic pH meter. These are less than $20. But you basically hold it down in the fluid here and it's registering, still going down, uh, 3.7? Yeah, so this <laughs> this is definitely vinegar. But so my vinegar is done. This is ready to go, ready to go. What you want to do to store vinegar, however, you have to be really careful when you make vinegar. This is live. You might want to pasteurize it. Um, put this in a pot. Decant this off. There's probably some some schmutz in the bottom that you want to um, you know siphon this off and, and be careful not to get that stuff out of the bottom of the crock. But siphon this off into a cook pot. Raise the temperature to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. That'll kill off the acetobacter and give you a nice shelf stable product. And you're thinking, hey John, you know, I really, I really want those probiotics. I really want that, you know, the, the, that bacteria in my diet. I'm really, you know, trying to diversify the, the, the microbes that I'm ingesting. So in that case, awesome. Keep it like this. Don't pasteurize it, but put it in bottles and with a very narrow neck. You always buy vinegar in bottles with a very narrow neck. There's a reason for that. Remember I said the acetobacters are an aerobic ferment. So that the contact in that little narrow necked bottle is going to be minimized and you won't, the acetobacters in the bottle of vinegar won't have the, you know, the oxygen exchange that they need to continue to break down this vinegar. If I leave this like this with the vinegar taken out, I don't have that protective pellicle covering the surface of this vinegar. This is exposed to oxygen. It's going to continue to ferment. It's going to continue to break down. And if I leave this for another month, it's going to be like really bad diluted grape juice. It, it'll literally, it, the acetobacters will start to ferment the, the, the acid in the vinegar and you'll be left with nothing. So now that you've got this where you want it, you know, you got a pH of three and a half, and you know you can test it however you want to test it. Store this. Put this in jars. Fill it all the way up to the top and put a lid on tight. You know it's not gonna expand. It's not gonna you know blow the lid out. You don't have to worry about that. But you want to make sure you have to minimize contact with oxygen to store your vinegar. This is this is a live food product. You have to take good care of it. So. Um, that's vinegar, enjoy. Let me get back to Harry's book though. This is an awesome book. Buy this book on Amazon. Link's down below. Check this book out. Harry Rosenblum, Vinegar Revival. It's gorgeously, it's well produced. It's got you know full color pictures, all kinds of great recipes of things you can make. Uh, roast chicken adobo. And he's got pictures of everything that you can, that you can make with your vinegar. Different, uh, here's a mignonette to eat with oysters with your homemade vinegar. Um, lots of uh, drinks, different kinds of shrub, carrot ginger shrub, apple cinnamon cider shrub. There's some a uh, little bit stronger drinks in here. And then lots of tips and troubleshooting about how to make vinegar. This is absolutely a wonderful book. And like I said, it's under $20. Grab one of these from Amazon today. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Support Harry and his book. And if you have any questions about making vinegar, leave a comment below. And I'll see you next week here on Better Done Yourself.